Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today in front of me right now, I have the New Matter Mod T 3D printer. This is an easy to use, affordable, and pretty quiet 3D printer. Your kids could even use this thing. It is really that easy and simple. No adjustment is required. I have printed a ton of stuff with this, and I'm gonna show you that in a second, but I just kinda of wanna talk about the printer right now. Now these are $399, comes with everything you need and a roll of filament. They do have replaceable build plates, and that's my only gripe with this unit. I've printed so much that my build plate is pretty much worn out, so I'm gonna have to get a new one. Now, I am in no way affiliated with New Matter at all. They sent me this as a review unit. I get to keep it for a few weeks and test it out. I really wish I could keep this thing forever because I actually really love this little printer. This thing is pretty much targeted at in-home use and educational use. But if you're a maker, you can also get a hold of this thing and do some really cool stuff with it. So this printer goes for $399. They did have a sale going on, and to tell you the truth, I'm not sure if it's going on anymore. It is worth $400, bucks, but you can take that money, add some more to it, and get a real Prusa i3 Mark II. That will print way better quality, bigger prints, but you will have to do a lot of tinkering with it. This requires pretty much zero maintenance, zero setup time. So when I got this thing out of the box, I had it up and printing within 40 minutes. And the main thing was I read through the articles online before I started printing and downloaded the drivers I needed. So within 45 minutes of taking this out, I was printing Groot. And the very first print I did was this little baby Groot here. And it came out amazing. Now I'm using their New Matter Pink filament. And I actually, I haven't tested it with any other PLA. This is a PLA printer. We do not have a heated bed, so it's going to be hard to do anything else besides PLA. But the quality is really, really good. Now I'm using Cura. And if you guys want the settings for my Cura, just let me know. And I can upload it to Mega or something like that. I've had really good luck with this. I've only had two failed prints out of all the prints I've done. Right now, I just kind of want to go over the printer, show you how it works a little bit, what came in the box, and what I printed. Okay, so this is actually pretty cool. The way this bed moves around, there are two rods here that move. On the bottom of your plate, there are teeth across from each other. So I'm just going to set it down, and it's really cool. It's not that loud when you're printing with it, especially with the cover on. It gets really, really quiet. So these are the build plates here, and let me take this one off of here. As you can see, I've scuffed it up. I've tried to get more life out of it, but I think it's pretty much done. I've done a lot of printing with it, and um, I actually hairsprayed it. I tried tape everything but these are replaceable and as you can see this one is a little bit warped so i definitely need a new one to start printing some high quality stuff this will print smaller things it will stick to the bed but if i try to print anything flat it always comes out warped very easy to use when you get a new one you're just gonna snap it right on there and everything should be level for you so I'm really not sure if this has sensors in it or it's just automatically programmed by the build height because it does adjust itself. This plate will make itself level, make itself straight. And every time I've printed, I've had super awesome results except for two times. And I'm gonna show you those right now. So this was a case for an orange pie. And as you can see right here, Got some warping, like really bad warping going on. And the second thing was a case for my Raspberry Pi. Warping. And it's due to the bed being worn out. If I would have printed these flat units first before I started messing with the bed, these probably would have came out perfect. Single button. It uses Wi-Fi or USB, and I always just plug it in with USB. I can load my G-code from Cura directly to the unit, press the button, the extruder starts to heat up, and you're good to go. It just starts printing, and it does really good. Let me show you the back side. So on the back side here, we have our filament spool holder. 
that actually comes in the box, this will disconnect. You just throw it right on. So there's not many parts at all to put together. We have a USB port and our power. Over here, we have our filament feed. Goes up the tube here, and this top of the tube actually pops off so you can unload it and load it. Within the software, there is an option to unload and load new filament, which is really cool. You just press it, it heats up, it tells you exactly what to do, you change your filament out, and you're good to go. So what it comes with in the box, a USB cable, about six feet, possibly. I already had one, so I never even opened this. A brass brush to clean the extruder head for the extruder nozzle off. A scraper. Now this has a plastic razor blade shape on it and it is replaceable but I haven't found any plastic razor blades. It's a little scuffed up but it works great so you don't scratch that plastic build plate. A pair of side cutters, snippers or dykes, whatever you want to call them, just for cutting your filament. And our power supply. Now I don't have the uh, cord, it's plugged in right here actually. But uh, this is all that powers the unit, 75 watts. It puts out 24 volts, 2.5 amps, and 75 watts. That's all you need to power the Mod T. So here's a few things that I have printed with the printer. A lot of the stuff actually went to my nephews and nieces. Um, I printed a lot of these little Groots, some Pokemon, and things like that. This is what I have right now. The quality is really, really good. So this is a 3D Benchy. And I'm actually under extruding a little bit here. On the top, this was actually my fault. The top of the smokestack or the steam stack, whatever you want to call it, is a little squished. I picked it up while it was still hot and squished it myself. There are tons of settings in Cura that you can adjust. And since I printed this, this was one of the first things I printed, I've adjusted it. And you'll see that in the other models here. Next up, we have this cute little baby dragon. Now, I will leave links to Thingiverse if any of you guys want to try any of these out on your 3D printer. But this thing came out really well. There's a lot of support material, and over on the side here, underneath, that support material just kind of fused a little more than it should have. I could snip that off, but I'm not too worried about it. It looks great. The quality is very high resolution. This was after some adjusting in Cura, and I actually went through and adjusted even more to get better prints. Here, we have the little baby thinking group. And the quality is really good on this. The build plate stuck very well. There was no support material with this one here. So this little thing's going to go on my wife's desk at work and she could either plant a little plant in it. I actually went down in size with this. This is not a full size print. The file from Thingiverse is a little bit bigger, but it would have taken me a long time to print it. And I think this is perfect size for your desk. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero NES case. This is the bottom half and you saw the top half failed. On the bottom here, it's starting to get pitted. This was one of the last things that I printed. And as you can see, it's starting to conform to the build plate where I scratched it up. In the back here, if you can see these, they're a little messed up. Now they're not too bad. You could trim them up with a little bit of, uh, with a little razor blade or something like that. So the quality on the back is starting to fade a bit. And I really think it has to do with the warped build plate. And finally, we have Little Baby Groot. This was actually printed in two pieces. So you got the head and the body. Fits perfectly. Now I scaled him down a little bit too because it was going to take me about 12 hours to print this. This worked on the first try. I didn't have any failed prints with him, and it's a pretty big print to be printing on the Mod T. 
Both pieces I printed, printed the first time perfectly. Very, very nice little printer. So final thoughts after having this for a week, I gotta say I am impressed with this little printer. I was not expecting it to print that well. It does an amazing job. I'll be doing another follow-up video in about a week here. Um, I'm gonna have my daughter print some stuff. She can pick out what she wants on Thingiverse. I have another build plate on the way. I only ordered one. It's 15 bucks to order it. If somebody has a solution, like a glass plate that's the same exact size, we could fit in there somehow, let me know in the comments because that would be amazing. I know it's not a heated bed, but if we could get that thing sticky with some hairspray, it would definitely stick very well as long as it's flat. I really appreciate you guys watching. I will leave links to the New Matter store down below so you can go check out what they got. I don't make any money if you buy one. This is my third 3D printer. I have an Anet A8, a TiVo Black Widow. And to tell you the truth, I love printing on this because all I gotta do is hit the print button and go. There's no adjustment at all. And I love to tinker, but sometimes it gets really annoying print after print failing on like the A-Net or the Black Widow, something like that. You have to do a lot of adjustments to get it to print perfectly. This thing pretty much comes out of the box printing very well. Like always, thanks for watching.